The Global Tobacco and Nicotine Forum underway in Washington. That's where our Angelica Levito just caught up with the chairman and CEO of Altria. He talked about the Juul investment and the interactions with the Trump White House. But she began by asking what he had to say about the breakdown in merger talks with Philip Morris. We are always looking for opportunities to strengthen our position. And uh, ultimately, we thought it was worth uh, a discussion with, uh, with Philip Morris International about whether there was an opportunity to merge. Ultimately, we couldn't come to terms, and so we're back focused on our very strong position in the U.S. market. And uh, uh, I think we find that exploring opportunities is important, but we're very pleased with our market position today, particularly given the portfolio of non-combustible tobacco products we have. Would you have invested in Juul now, given the current environment? You know, I have to say, when we invested last December, we believed two things. We believed Juul was positioned to become the the market share leader in the U.S. market. In the most recent quarter, they were almost a 50 share. So we were right about that. And we also knew that there was a uh, youth e-vapor use um, uh, epidemic and that it was going to have to be addressed uh, over the next few years in order to preserve the opportunity for e-vapor products. So I think that uh, things are, are turning out about the way we expected. And I just think it's too early to have fully addressed and driven down youth e-vapor rates. I think we'll ultimately get there. Have you spoken to the Trump administration at all about its flavor ban or any of the other efforts it's considering? I have not spoken to them directly, uh, but certainly I've been following it uh, closely. And, you know, I have to say, given the increase recently in youth use of e-vapor products, uh, I think that uh, it's important to take action to address that issue. Uh, it's not only important to address the youth e-vapor use issue, but I think it's also important to preserve uh, the e-vapor option for adult cigarette smokers. Our Angelica Levito joins us this morning. Talk about that. Angelica, it's good to have you. Uh, you've covered this space uh, so well for so long. Um, your thoughts on that interview? And I wonder, do we need to start paying more attention to ICOS as much as we've paid attention to Juul? Yeah, I think it was interesting hearing Howard say that he would invest in Juul, given everything we know now. He brought up a good point, which is that this um, epidemic really uh, started last year with the FDA calling it an epidemic, and it's only been a year. Juul has taken some steps to try and curb things, but he brings up a good point that it's still early days. Um, I do think that ICOS is an important part of the story that has gotten lost. Of course, it's their new heated tobacco product that is um, now for sale in the U.S. and will just be a growing part of the portfolio. Uh, Angelica, you know, it's interesting that a former Altria executive is now going to run Juul they have no control there, nor a path to control, but this would seem to bring the two companies closer together rather than further apart. Exactly. I think this shows that Altria is not happy given everything going on. I mean, you see, you see headlines every single day about the vaping epidemic. You see states banning flavors all, outright. You see all of this action, and I think it's just a sign that Altria wants some change and wants to see a leader that it knows can try to shift the tide here. How exposed is Altria to Juul and the misfortunes that the company is facing? I mean, so right now the deal still hasn't been approved by regulators, so the earnings aren't showing up on those financial statements. However, Altria is still subject to all of the headline risk. Every time you hear something about Juul, it will impact Altria, and it ruins the brand if there's bad news every day about it. Well, and it also, of course, was a key reason why uh, Philip Morris International and Altria were unable to get to the finish line in terms of negotiating a deal. You asked them about that, but I'm curious, is there any sense, as there seems to be, that once things become clearer in terms of vaping and the bans or where things stand from a regulatory standpoint, that the two companies may undertake the effort to get together again? You know, Howard did say that they're always looking at opportunities and they thought there might be one here. So it didn't sound like he ruled it out based purely on strategy. Um, he said it was more about terms. So you could see something along those lines. Some analysts have floated the idea that maybe the companies come together and then they split focused on cigarettes with one company and maybe the other products like Juul, Icos, et cetera, on other companies. I think it's an interesting idea and it really will depend on what happens with all the regulatory landscape. Yeah, well, we've also noted, of course, and we can see it next to you there, Altria's share price not responding positively. Mm -hmm. It went down after we reported the potential economics of the deal roughly a month ago. Yeah. I think it was the 27th of August. And it's not going up today either. I think based on the continued fear about 
their main market going away. And, you know, Howard did bring up a point when we talked about cigarette declines. Of course, the actual number of cigarettes they've been selling has been um, on a downward trajectory for years. However, since e-cigarettes entered the landscape, those numbers have been falling even faster, which if you're Altria and you do have a stake in Juul, that's not necessarily a bad thing. However, I think that the company, you know, recognizes that it has to change somehow. What kind of uh, regulatory action are you expecting out of Washington against Juul potentially and, and vaping? I mean, how, how far does this go? Mm -hmm. Well, right now, actually, on Capitol Hill, there is another hearing on vaping, and you have the acting FDA chief, Ned Sharpless, testifying. Um, so you'll probably hear more about the flavor ban and what we can expect from that. They said it will see it in a few weeks. It's been... Um, it's been a few weeks now, so we'll see when we can actually uh, see the final regulation. Everyone's expecting the mint and menthol to be included in that ban. And today, Jewel also said that it will not lobby the Trump administration on any of those policies.